Oh, fuck it. Hey, folks. Joseph A. Sabor here. And I just wasted my time seeing the most god awful, watered down, boring abomination of a classic 1987 film. That's right. I'm talking about Robocop. You know, a movie which is part human, part machine, and goes around to fight crime in the streets of Detroit. However, this version feels like they've changed everything that what the original was all about and make it into a one tired boring story that just felt like it's that it's all empty inside I just can't believe that we're wasting our time seeing these crummy pathetic remakes that shouldn't even be remade in the first place because it's totally unnecessary and it ruins the whole premise of the original material and that's my problem with remakes today is that isn't that the whole point of remaking a movie supposed to improve something that failed the first time well guess what no one listens they just want to take a classic movie and throw it in with some random bullshit just to make people get pissed off even more that's the problem with today's generation of movies. They don't care about the characters, the cast and crew, or any of the stories that's been going on. All they care about is money. That's all it is. They're milking it for what it's worth. No creativity whatsoever. We had so many bad remakes already, such as Red Dawn, Total Recall, uh and many other films that came before it like oh and I can go on and on and on about this like the Dukes of Hazard, the Honeymooners, Assault of Precent 13, like Footloose, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Psycho oh god this just needs to stop I, I wish Hollywood would stop doing this crap because it just keeps going on and on and it'll, it'll never stop it never will no matter how they bad they try it's not going to stop so let's get on with this shitty remake that I'm about to review right now it stars Joel Kinnaman from the TV show The Killing Michael Keaton Gary Oldman Samuel Jackson Abby Corbnish, Jackie Earl Haley, Jennifer Ayle, Michael K. Williams, Jay Prochel, Amy Garcia, Marianne Jean Bettis, Joel Paul Retton, and Casey Collins. And it's directed by Jose Padaha. Well, this was a tough movie to review or having to waste my time with it. So here it goes. The movie begins set in the year 2028 in Detroit, Michigan, a multinational conglomerate, Omnicorp, which is at the center of robotics and technology, have sent a lot of drones around the world that includes what was shown on a Fox News Channel type show called The Novak Element, which is won by television personality Pat Novak who's played by Samuel Jackson he basically talks about what was going on in the entire world why everybody was obsessed with robots well somewhere in Iran as we speak they sent out Ed 209 along with many robots coming around the streets and checking out on all the victims to find out if one of them is either a threat or a non-threat. Yeah. And that's why I don't like about these kind of scenes because 
we know we've seen this before in many movies and nowadays I feel like they're really going overboard with this crap that I think that's what's wrong with our society today. They're always thinking that people over there at Iran are the enemies. Yeah, that's what makes me sick about this whole thing. Yeah. Welcome to our world. Well, anyway, as we sit back to it in Detroit, Michigan, a cop named Alex Murphy, who's now being played by Joe Kinderman instead of Peter Weller, yeah, that's where the insult gets to, who's now working at the Detroit Police Department with a new partner. This time he's a black man and not a woman, and he's also working for a lieutenant who's not a man, but a woman, a black woman. Yeah, see, it's like nowadays we want to see another movie where they want to switch genders. Yeah, that's what we really need, don't we? Where have we seen that before? Yeah, Taxi, that's why. God, I hate that fucking movie. Anyway, back to that. Now, Alex and his partner decided to team up against a criminal lord that's going around doing a lot of property, you know, we kind of get the idea, yada, 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 and his partner gets shot, you know, and so on, so forth, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just so ridiculous, I, I even get tired of having to deal with it, okay, uh, after that, you know, he finally went back home, you know, already injured and stuff, and got to meet his wife and kids, you know, just to see how everybody is doing, until one night, and you're gonna love this. He winds up getting killed om almost in a near death experience by an exploding car, which causes him to lose an arm and a leg, not to mention his vision, which has a lot of burns. Oh, God. Um, yeah, so that means that he doesn't get blasted away by criminals now. So, so as a result, a scientist named Dr. Danette Norton, who's played by Gary Oldman, decided to create the perfect robot to absorb um, Alex Murphy's body so he would soon become, as we speak, Robocop. Of course, since we found out that he almost had no body left over, yeah, they really pulled the pieces on that one, other than his brain and, and his lungs. Yeah. So once he becomes Robocop, he does what he does best, fight crime, save people's lives, and do whatever to protect the city from danger. Yeah, big deal. I, I couldn't believe that I had to sit through almost two hours of of my life that I will never get back, of having to see an awesome, exciting character that I really enjoyed as a kid turn into a boring, waste of time, unnecessary, <sighs> deplorable mess of a movie. I can't believe it. They actually made Robocop into a pussy whipped, I had to say this, whiny, bitchy, dick of a machine. I mean, that goes the same with Alex Murphy himself. I mean, I'm sorry, man, but you know, Joe Kinderman may be good in the TV show The Killing, but deep down of it, his role as Alex Murphy is just pretty much sums it up for his character. A dick. That's what he is. A complete whiny dick. And I, I really hate that. I, I mean, I couldn't believe how boring his character really is. And I just didn't like it at all. In fact, I feel like I only root for for some of the characters in this movie more than, than him any day. I don't know. Yeah, and it's just too much. I also hated the costume that they had to use for Robocop. It was just a shitty, 
rehash version of the 1987 original look that they had all this time. It's ugly. You know, it looks awful in black. Uh, oh god, I, 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 it's just an insult to the intelligence. You know the sad part about this, though? It was that there was one scene in the movie, and I couldn't believe this, only one scene where they actually showed a clip of the original look from 1987. Yeah, the original Robocop, uh, the original Robocop look that looks exactly like this one right here from this film. But unfortunately, and I have to give this away, they put in two sirens, you know, red and blue. <laughs> Yeah, they, they thought that would be clever for it. And what, and of course, Michael Keaton's character said, it would be more of an embarrassment. Yeah. How about we paint it black? That's right. That's, that's Michael Keaton talking. Because, after all, he was Batman. Oh, man. Well... I'll give you this though, it was worth seeing Michael Keaton on screen again because I haven't seen Michael Keaton in a movie you know, since the late 2000s I believe. Yeah, it's kind of a shame though because he's such a great actor but he, he totally got wasted in this mess. Um, and, and the funny thing is about this character, you know, Raymond, uh, yeah, Raymond of course, that's his name. We never even knew that he was going to be the villain until the end of the movie. And that's what pisses me off. I hate it when they do that shit. Because we never knew for the fact that he was going to be one. I thought he was just going to be like, you know, the cup, the person who just loves to do anything to make this robot work. Like he was just going to be a successful businessman no matter what. But no, they had to make him evil. And I didn't think he was evil at all throughout this entire film you know, until the end. So it's just bullshit. Uh, what a waste. Um, Gary Oldman, on the other hand, I thought he was very good, at, at least as a scientist. You know. And he, yeah, he was definitely exactly what a scientist would definitely be. And I really did enjoy his performance. Okay, but sadly, you know. Consider how poorly this movie was written. I mean, he deserves better. Um, Samuel Jackson is just, well, Samuel Jack. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson. I mean, he's just basically portraying as just a TV personality, you know, throwing in some quirky lines, you know, so on and so forth, you know, trying to be as funny as he can get. In fact, I think I like his KTLA interview of him. You know, during <laughs> during this news broadcast, you know, where Sam Rubin actually got his name wrong, <laughs> calls him Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> yeah, I gotta admit that was hilarious. More a whole lot better than this fucking movie. Um, oh uh, yeah, the characters were were boring as hell. I I didn't care any I didn't care for anybody in this movie whatsoever. In fact, this whole uh, story between him as a father. With his wife and son was just as boring as watching a bad drama. Um, it, it really was. Um, I didn't care about them whatsoever. They, they were just. It, it was you know they were just as boring as hell. And and after seeing this movie, it just feels like uh, I didn't want to deal with this anymore. I mean, who gives a crap about his wife and kid? I don't care anymore. Okay, we already get that idea. We don't need to see more of this shit. And that was a waste. The, oh, and the action sequence of this movie was just... You know, it was it was poorly done. Uh, it was a lot of, you know, shoot 'em ups and everything. There was even one scene where he was under night vision. And, yeah, he had to shoot everybody you know, in the dark you know, inside the factory. Yeah, while well, he's wearing his night vision, so... And what's also stupid about this is that all the criminals can't even see him that much. So he's already in the dark. 
already shooting everybody. I mean, I feel like I've seen that before in video games and in that shitty movie, Along in the Dark. Yeah, that was a terrible film, by the way. And there were a lot of scenes that seemed to go on, and, and I feel like it was almost, you know, slowly, you know, going on for so long, and we didn't get to see more of, of the action that was going against it. It's just, we just get into this whole ridiculous story that just didn't seem right to me. I, I can't believe they changed this whole storyline from from the original material to this. And they even started throwing in some classic lines such as, I wouldn't buy that for a dollar, and and of course, dead or alive, you're coming with me. I can't believe they even dared to throw these lines that's coming from the classic 1987 film. Oh, this movie sucks. My advice to you? If you have an HD TV and a Blu-ray player, my recommendation is to buy or rent, um, if you ever get a chance, the original and always pumped up classic, the 1987 film Robocop. It looks as better and more exciting than this, this watered down, boring adaptation of a classic 1987 film that you know you're going to feel angry and frustrated like I have already. In fact, this movie is so exciting that you'll never get tired of it. That's for sure. It's mastered in 4K, it has a lot of great extras on here, and You'll never get tired of it. This will be as remembered as the day goes on. Whereas the remake will be a forgettable piece of shit that will never be remembered as years follow. That's for sure. So anyway, I give this so-called remake of Robocop the legendary Zero Stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Much later. Bye.